Shalom Chavarim, I'm Stephen Bernoun. You're watching Israeli News Live. And some of you guys may remember this particular article that we shared with you from RT News just recently. MPs agrees to ban Monsanto lobbyists from the European Parliament. Well, that's what they were trying to do. And of course, that's something they agreed to do then. But the, the debate has gone much deeper about Monsanto and their involvement in Europe. And of course, their herbicide or pesticide, I should say, uh, that, claim, that contains, uh, of course, this Roundup, but it contains glyphosate. Glyphosate is a very deadly substance inside of uh, the pesticide called Roundup. And for those of you that may not know, of course, there's their little famous little kills weeds, not the lawn type of thing, but it's been showing up in food chains all over the globe. Anywhere where Monsanto's product happens to be, it does show up in the food supply. And so Europe has really been trying to ban the substance altogether. In fact, France has certainly pushed to, to lobby just for that very reason there. Uh, and France set to oppose the EU's five-year renewal of glyphosate uh, authorization. Well, Emmanuel Fallon, who is a spokesman for the European Parliament, we've been in back and forth contact with him, been talking to him about this battle uh, with uh, Monsanto that they have taken on there at the European Parliament. And so he sent me immediately, as soon as just the other day the vote came out, uh, those that would be in favor, those that would be against, and those that would abstain from this renewal of glyphosate, the five-year renewal, which would allow this chemical to be used continually inside of Europe. And overwhelmingly, the countries were voting for that renewal. Now, as Emmanuel Fallon pointed out to me, it was not unanimous. And that was really nice to see here. We can see the abstentions here, Romania, Bulgaria, uh, Portugal, uh, Algamain and Polon, and of course those that were contrary to it were Italy, France, Croatia, Greece, Belgium, uh, and, and several other countries down through here. But overwhelmingly, countries with the statistics already that are being proven that is causing cancer, and scientists are already very concerned about it, just a number of countries, Finland, uh, Britain, Denmark, Spain, Estonia, uh, Slovenia, Czech Republic even, and even Slovakia, both countries, Hungary, Sweden, Ireland, all of them in favor of allowing this deadly chemical to continue on, uh, of course, being used. And we also know, as my wife Yana has pointed out on many uh, interviews that she has done with uh, doctors such as Sherry Timpany, and Sherry Timpany, I believe, is one of the doctors that have said that glyphosate is also being used in, of course, uh, vaccines and one reason why there no doubt may be a rise of cancer amongst those that take vaccines as well as it's been known to cause autism and other things as well. But as RT brought out and as the, in the article here, the EU parliaments were banning Monsanto's lobbyists from the European Parliament because they have such a heavy sway on which way the vote goes, not the really the true concern uh, of the public at large, which we saw exactly in this particular uh, vote that just took place here. So really have to encourage Emmanuel Fallon, the spokesman for the European Parliament there, uh, for his courageous uh, step in, in bringing this more to light and exposing what Monsanto is doing there in Europe. We had planned on being back in Europe uh, on the 15th of November. We were going to the uh, European Parliament interviewing Emmanuel Fallon there uh, until my wife, Jana, of course, uh, also our our uh, specialist journalist as far as in um, medical interviews there. She, of course, she has fallen sick uh, right now. So do keep her in your prayers. We appreciate that and your continued help and keeping this ministry going as well. Uh, moving on into other news as well. Wanted to bring this back to your attention here. Many of you guys, I'm sure, remember General Wesley Clark. And uh, after 9-11, and when he comes out and exposes what is actually happening there, uh, how the U.S. plans on taking over many other nations in the region, not just taking out Iraq, but also later Syria, uh, Lebanon uh, being another one there. Let me just let's let you listen to General Wesley Clark once again about this issue. I'm Rumsfeld. I worked for him as a White House fellow in the 1970s. All this is in the book. And, um, and I said, am I doing okay on CNN? He said, yeah, 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 fine. He said, uh, I'm thinking about it. He says, I read your book. And... Uh, he said, uh, this is a book that talks about the Coast Guard campaign, and he said, I just want to tell you, he said, nobody's going to tell us where or when we can bomb. Nobody. He said, I'm thinking of calling this a floating coalition. What do you think about that? I said, well, sir, uh, thanks for reading my book, and uh, 
Well, uh, he said, thanks, that's all the time I've got. Really? And um, I went downstairs, I was leaving the Pentagon, and an officer from the Joint Staff called me into his office and said, I, I want you to know, he said, sir, we're going to attack Iraq. And I said, why? He said, we don't know. He said, uh, I said, well, did they tie Saddam to 9-11? He said, uh, no. He said, but um, I guess it's, they don't know what to do about terrorism. And so uh, the, it, they, they think, but they can attack states and they want to look strong. And so I guess they think if they take down a state, it will intimidate the terrorists. And, you know, it's like that old saying he said, if the only tool you have is a hammer, then every problem has to be a nail. Well, I walked out of there pretty upset, and then uh, we attacked Afghanistan. I was pretty happy about that. We should have. And then I came back to the Pentagon about six weeks later. I saw the same officer. I said, why, uh, why haven't we attacked Iraq? Are we still going to attack Iraq? He said, oh, sir. He says, it's worse than that. He said, um, he pulled up a piece of paper off his desk. He said, I just got this memo from the Secretary of Defense's office. It says we're going to attack and destroy the governments in, in seven countries in five years. We're going to start with Iraq, and then we're going to move to Syria, Lebanon, Libya, Somalia, Sudan, and Iran. Now, I said, seven, okay. Seven countries in five years. I said, is that a classified memo? So as you can see there, seven countries in five years. Now, of course, they definitely have not been on track as far as a timeline, but as far as those countries that are involved, uh, Iraq certainly went down. Syria, they're still uh, engulfed in this battle, have not been able to defeat Syria since Russia has stepped in. Definitely let you know the prophecy uh, tidings out of the east and the north. And of course, I do couple that a lot of times because of North Korea, but Russia's involvement in Syria and even China's uh, kind of backhand involvement in Syria has really kind of kept NATO from being able to destroy these countries. Because it's not just the United States, it is NATO as a whole that is going against these countries. And of course, Sudan is in a major quagmire already. We know that Libya, uh, many of these other nations already have toppled in there. Egypt as well, the government got replaced there. And now we're dealing, of course, and I've been waiting for this on the radar, Lebanon and Iran. And, uh, you know, and as we have been seeing, and I'm going to go back to this in a moment, the buildup, because the other day folks couldn't see the images very well from already happened in his news case there. But I wanted to bring up Lebanon because a new article came out, is on RT today, uh, Hezbollah chief Saudi Arabia declared war on Lebanon. Prime Minister Hari forced to resign and detained. Uh, Nasrallah is claiming that what's going on with the uh, Prime Minister of Lebanon is that he's actually been imprisoned in Saudi Arabia. And he claims that the Saudis have actually wrote his, le uh, his resignation letter for him. And he's claiming that they're trying to destabilize the country, basically cause a civil war with inside the nation itself, rather than letting the Lebanese people handle their own issues there. I can believe actually what he's saying to be pretty much accurate. And it certainly seems like this is exactly what, uh, you know, that NATO members are probably wanting to see happen. Maybe the U.S., however you might say it, because of that intention. But when you read the article, the U.S. is very clear to make it a uh, point that this is not their real intention, that Saudi Arabia shouldn't do this to this man. And after all, Mr. Uh, uh, <laughs> the Prime Minister of Lebanon is a great ally to the U.S. Sure he is. He allowed the U.S. to bring in a huge arm uh, shipment of uh, military equipment there to his country. Still, that equipment has never really anyone non known what has actually happened to it or what it's going to be used for. My thought has always been that it would be used on an assault on Damascus in the near future. But of course, Hezbollah being in the country, in the southern part of the country, that would make it very difficult. But they may end up using it for both purposes, to take down Lebanon as well as to take down Damascus. Still waiting to see exactly how that's going to play out. Uh, but speaking of this information that I was sharing with you, let's just kind of back up real quick here. Let's jump over here to uh, already happen his broadcast there because I mentioned Iran. We're talking about General Wesley Clark here. And I also mentioned about Iran itself and how that, uh, you know, I mentioned the other day that Iran is, is gearing up for, or the U.S. is gearing up for a war there 
from uh, a tweet that was brought out by Lorenzo here on Already Happen. Our, and Lorenzo is an Italian journalist, a uh, very, very intelligent man there, and he brings out a lot of information before it actually happens. And he was speaking about how that we have a large troop equipment. That's what happens when uh, certain software doesn't like to recognize sites because they're afraid of you knowing the truth there. They send up their little blocks of the sites there. But the U.S. sending in a lot more troops there as well as soldiers. Uh, another large uh, uh, movement of soldiers is being brought into Kuwait there. And, you know, what else could it be for then? If it's not for the U.S. Uh, getting ready to deal with Iran, and it's not just, of course, in Kuwait either. We know in Afghanistan a lot more troops have been sent there. One might argue that the troops are being sent there for the purpose of dealing with uh, the fight, the battle going on in Afghanistan. But then again, Afghanistan, uh, Kuwait, and Iraq are all bordering Iran, so it makes it also easier if they have to deal with any kind of uh, combat mission against Iran to have some extra backup troops on the ground. So he put on here, Iran on Saturday held the heavily choreographed pageant of anti-Americanism that marks the anniversary of the 1979 takeover of the U.S. Embassy in Tehran as uh, relations with President Donald Trump's administration worsen and the fate of its nuclear agreement with the world powers uh, uh, is unresolved. So what's going to happen? How is it going to happen? Well, it just remains to be seen. But nonetheless, uh, this latest issue about Lebanon, that's what's really got me interested there. Uh, it almost sounds like it is a total setup for another internal strife inside of Lebanon to get it ready for a total collapse of the country. Very much what we've seen in Syria, and uh, maybe Nasrallah sees that himself. Don't have the most favorable opinion in, 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 when it comes to Hezbollah, but nonetheless, I certainly see an internal strife being set up by external powers. And of course, Saudi Arabia leading the way in that. Um, I can't have to think about how President Trump had mentioned before when they're talking about uh, peace in the Middle East and how that the foreign neighbors would end up coming to the aid of Israel in this, Saudi Arabia being one of them. But again, it comes at a great risk. We are going to be bringing out some interesting uh, insights here in the very near future, some things I've been working on. Uh, I really feel that uh, needs to be directed towards my own countrymen, Israel and exactly our part and why we should not be involved, uh, whether it be with Lebanon, Syria especially. We're going to be getting into that much more in depth here in the very near future. I'm Stephen Benoon with Israeli News Live, Erev Tov.